Hi, I'm Kat at Bagouche, an ACT expert, and today I'm going to go over some of the math tips that you might not have heard about that will help you out whether you're just starting a study or whether you're about to take the actual exam. So one tip is to pay attention to geometry. So a lot of students want to go right to their edge point when it comes to material. They want to look at the trig, they want to get the advanced algebra. You need to know that, but you know what? The geometry is 40% of the math section. So some of you might not have seen geometry since you were maybe in ninth grade, eighth grade. Don't neglect your geometry. Know your formulas. Okay. So a lot of people don't realize that on the ACT, you are expected to memorize formulas. You're not going to be given a list of area of a circle, a volume of a sphere, for instance. We've realized that this is a challenge for students. People don't know what they need to know, what they need to memorize, and so we put together a guide to help you out. And if you go down and look at the link in the description, if you click on that, it's going to open up a new tab and you can take a look at the list of formulas that you do need to know for the ACT. One minute, two approaches per question. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, in the ACT math section, you're going to be answering 60 questions in 60 minutes. That doesn't leave you a lot of time. And so one mistake students often make is they put way too much time into questions that they don't immediately understand. One way you can avoid this mistake and avoid the situation where you run out of time and you're still on that one problem is to not put too much time on that one problem. One minute maximum before you skip, okay? So that's the most amount of time you want to spend on a question. You can come back to it later. Another way to think about this is two approaches. If you don't get to an answer after two different attempts, like maybe for one attempt you work it backwards, maybe for another attempt you plug in a sample number and see if that sample number gives you the answer you need, that's two approaches. After two approaches, just skip if you haven't come up with an answer. If you skip questions, and I recommend that you do in many cases, one tip you might not have heard of is to lightly bubble. Okay, so what I mean by that is before you skip the question, go ahead and just answer. Take your best guess or just take any random guess, but make that bubble a little bit lighter than you normally would do. And the idea here is that you can come back and see that that's a slightly lighter bubble. That question might deserve some more attention. However, if you run out of time, it's still dark enough that the Scantron's going to pick it up. A lot of students don't realize how sensitive the Scantron machines really are. Okay, so somewhat lightly shaded bubbles are still going to register. All right, so it's a nice little system for you to be able to figure out which ones you might want to spend more time on if you have more time. And if you don't, at least you're going to have some chance of getting it right. Okay, and last tip here. This one's a little bit more nuanced. It's what I call tri-split timing. So on the ACT, you're going to have 60 questions to answer in 60 minutes. But the thing about this questions, the question layout, is that they get harder as they go on. So the first third of the test is fairly easy. The middle is, well, those are the medium difficulty problems. And then the last third, those are where your challenging questions are going to be. And so we recommend that you spend different amounts of time on different portions of the math section. And so what might that look like? All right, well, I'm going to show you two different versions in terms of how you might try split your time. So somebody who's strong in math, like let's say you're already taking some practice tests and you're getting scores in the high 20s or low 30s, you are going to want a strategy something like this, which is a 10, 20, 30 split. What does this mean? It means that for, set, for questions 1 through 20, give yourself 10 minutes, just 10 minutes. Try and answer all 20 of those first questions in those first 10 minutes. The second, second 20 questions, in the next 20 minutes, and then you really want to pay attention and make sure that by the time you're at the halfway mark of the exam being over, once 30 minutes have gone by, you are starting to work on the last 20 questions in those 30 minutes, okay? So that's a really nice split to aim for if you're strong and quick in math. If you're a little bit more average in math, I don't like to say weak, but if you're not quite as quick as some of, your, some of the others in your class, a split here might be something like a 15-30-15. 15. 
And so in this scenario, you're going to want to spend about half of your time on those middle questions, okay? So you would have 15 minutes left for the hardest third, and you would devote 15 minutes to the easiest third, most of your time here in the middle. What you want to keep in mind, and this is something that people get really stressed out about this on the ACT math section, keep in mind that if you miss half the questions, okay, so if you only get like 30, 32 questions correct, that's going to translate into a roughly average score. So on your normal test in math and math class, that would be a flunking score, right? But on the ACT, it's average, okay? So what I'm saying here is if you don't get very many questions right in this last third, you're still in pretty good shape. And if you don't know which technique is best for you and you have some time still before the exam, go ahead and try out both. Try, try one version one day, try another the other day, and see which one produces a higher score for you. So those are my tips for today, and I hope you found them helpful. If you've liked this video, go ahead and like it. You can subscribe to the channel. And if you have comments, maybe some tips of your own you'd like to share, go ahead and leave them in the comment field. And until I see you next time, happy studying.